Boom, 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 boom. All right, folks, we're back. Let's get straight back into it. We're running out of time, of course, as usual, and I've barely done anything today. Certainly nothing that's uh, going to cut some profits. So hopefully this one will shift the balance in our favor. If I can just pick up that damn little screw. Yeah, good old 6S Plus. This is, uh, well, this wasn't my personal phone, but um, I had one of these for quite a while until I bumped up to the 7 Plus. I quite like them. They're a little heavy, but man, this one feels like maybe it's never been opened before. It's kind of got that genuine Apple seal feel to it. Okay. Let's see. Not going to matter if I'm gentle with this or not, but. Can we get your fingernail under there? Cut across. Now I'm having to use my sort of sharp edged version of my spudger. Come on. There we go. Definitely feels original. Yep, that was original. Shame the display is ruined. Oh well, take the glasses off. Glasses are a necessity because you start peeling those screens back with the force you need and little pieces of glass come flying off. Alright. Do you do touch repair of iPhone 7 home buttons? Uh, no, not at the moment. I haven't really had any experience with that. And it seems like it's quite a bit of delicate work. Not that I'm against it, but I certainly don't have any experience with it, so it would be perhaps more beneficial to your chance of a successful outcome to find someone who has done that already. It's something I should practice myself. Perhaps I should go and tear a couple of cables and see if they work afterwards. Yeah, after I try to repair them, that is. <coughs> and then we've got to get back to that other 6S that we had earlier, which has got the liquid damage in it. I need to get the motherboard out, or the logic board out, inspect it, see if we're fortunate and that the only thing that got liquid damage was perhaps the home button and that being the situation we'll just replace it probably have a look might be able to clean it up maybe if it's just the connector we can transplant a connector from another donor it's worth a shot even if it doesn't work at least we give it a shot this is in pretty good condition the battery is quite flat too as in physically flat so that's good I'll right, put that up up there. Hey, Carl Justin. Yeah, lunch was a little abrupt. There was some unexpected, but back at work now. It always catches me out how the iPhone 6S only has the two little screws there for the home button plate. Okay, let's switch this to 250. Just heat up the home button area, then hopefully the adhesive will let go off the glass. Making our life a bit easier. Yeah, got a courier delivery just turned up. That's going to be fun. I'll let someone else tend to that. Damn it, hasn't let go yet. It'll just be more screens, probably iPhone 6 screens. Yep, someone's using strong deodorant on this. Okay, let's get these side screws out.
That's kind of weird. If this was original, normally the original should have a piece of tape retaining that, or does it on the 6s. I only do enough of the 6s to uh, remember that now, the 6s plus rather. Maybe it's just the standard size 6 that has that. Oh well. What time is it here? It's uh, 2.30 basically. Hey Christian. Oh, that came up easy. I'll take that. This is a refurb screen, not an aftermarket. I basically always use refurbs, given a choice, for anything, anything 6 onwards. For iPhone 5S, 5C, or anything like, uh, anything older, I go for a high-end aftermarket. Only because the refurbs are so beaten up now that there's, they're definitely worse quality than the aftermarkets. And yeah, I mean, I still, I still get iPhone fours here to fix. So yeah, it's, they're not out of the, they're not out of the queue yet. Yeah, I don't know if it's grounding tape. I think it's just alignment tape. Certainly the 6S has it. Because you usually, yeah, whenever you get an original display the first time, you've got to cut it away so you can... It doesn't seem to have any metallic parts into it, so um, weave or anything like that. So I don't think it's grounding tape. Hey, career delivery. Thank you. Alright. Unfortunately, not the parts I was after. I'm waiting on a whole bunch of other stuff. But of course, as usual, the couriers never bring what you need in a hurry. They'll bring you what you don't need, and they'll delay what you do need. It's the law of the universe, it seems. Alright, I flicked off. There it is. I was going to say, I flicked off that retaining plate, but now it's back. Is that... So some focus. Alignment. I'm just feeling for the hole there. Make sure it sits in properly. You can always tell if that plastic guide is sitting askew on the sensor. Oop, crunchy noises. Yep. Get in there. I always forget to check to see if the little felt ring on the camera has shifted until after I've put that thing on, where it's too late. Fortunately, it's in the right spot. Not like the bad days with the iPhone 4 and 4S where you forget to put the earpiece mesh in and you'd only discover it after you've sealed it all back up and you know you've got to face yourself another 20-30 minutes of stuffing around to go and fix that problem that you created. I don't know how many times people tried to jam that uh, mesh in through the slot. Okay. 
Oop, I almost forgot to put my marks on. Took me a long time to actually get into the iPhone 6S, 6S Plus for doing screen replacements. I held off for quite a considerable period. I was kind of annoyed that I did. But the problem basically came down to the fact that I couldn't afford to just go and buy a um, 6S outright. Because it would be nice to be able to just buy the phone outright have one spare, so if you do anything wrong with the customer one you can just do a swap or something like that god damn anyway once I took the dive I realized that the success in some ways is easier than the six yeah, I beat myself up for that for a while okay. thinking of all the profits lost because I sent jobs off elsewhere The 7 I waited quite a while on because of the touch, the home button issue. But with that I found people must have just been butchers with those buttons. I can see how they get broken, but I think you'd have to try moderately hard to do that. Power up. Good. Sync, eh? Okie dokie. Seems to be doing the job just fine. Fantastic. Okay, that's done. I can go on the exit queue. That's another $600 made. Tales 303. Is that a reference to a um, cartridge size? Let's do a sync. Oh, here we go. Sync. Okay, next thing we'll do is quickly look at that iPhone 6 that came, success that came in. That I have naturally put down somewhere. Sweet Bridget, really, I'm the worst. Where did I put that? I even got it in a container. Scanning, scanning the room. Ah, there it is. No, that's a seven. I know it's got the magnetic pad on it. Where did I put that? Hey, Def Poms. No, we had the break and we're back. The break has been done and we have returned from the break. Oh, there it is. It's down by my dinosaurs. Funnily enough, in the job tray shelf. So it was in the right place, I was just looking in the wrong place. Ah, uh, cues. Naturally, I'm kidding. If only it was 600. That would be nice. So this is a really shonky bit of work by the uh, 
previous person that did this screen. So see if I can fix that up at least to start with. I don't know if the display is damaged or not. But I do want to at least get to a point that I'm happy with it. Okay. Get out of here, you s annoying little straps. Reminds me, I need to check my Facebook to see if someone has re responded back to me about a 2015 screen. They're probably going to say, no way, get stuffed, get out, get lost. Nope, no such luck. Okay, I, would have, I really, really thought that was, um, like I said, due to a 303 cartridge size for a weapon. You can see on, yeah, so on the 6S it definitely has it, these little pieces of tape on the side. Which obviously, oh, there's water under there. Gross. This is, yep, that's river water. Well, they even no, that's probably mine. Let's have a look at that home button. Okay, so I say we get that out. What I find interesting is the screen portion connector is in perfectly good condition. But if we look at this, when I take this foam perimeter off it, it's going to look nasty. Okay, The alcohol just lets me get it off a lot easier without it sort of sticking and tearing and yeah. Usually. Mm, kind of mangling this job up. There we go. Okay, so we can see we've got the corrosion here. Man, why can't I seem to handle this? And that's pretty bad. I guess what's happened is this is wicked up to the outer side, but it hasn't gone to the inside. So I suppose that makes sense then that it didn't show up on the actual the um, screen side one. Let's see if we can wash that away. If we can't wash this away, we'll try flux and boil it. And if that doesn't work, we'll just replace the connector. And if that doesn't work, we'll replace the home button. No, it seems to be pretty clean there. I might give it a touch with the solder. Hey Sonia. Hey Jimbo. I 
It's surprisingly difficult to hold this down. Maybe it's all the caffeine. Hey Arnold G. So we're going to just put this back in. See how it behaves, see if we have any issues. We are missing a screw for one of the th one third of it. That's okay. Hey Matt Rathk, Wraith, Wraith, Rathk, I can't be sure. Oh no, where's my charge cord? Oh, oh I know what happened. Still on the computer from the other day when we were testing to see if we could detect the board was in DFU mode, so that's what happened there. Oh great, we've got no charge. No charge at all coming through. Nothing. Alright. So we've got no charge coming through. So we've either got a bad dock, which is most likely in this instance. Well, the dock's not connected. That's even more likely, Paul. There we go. Try that now. Plugged in. Five. Yeah, okay. That's full charge rate. So now I've got to wait. And see if that brings it up. The charging is a little strange. It's jumping from about 1.2 amp, shall we say, back down to zero, back up to 1.2 amp. That gives me cause for concern. So get ourselves a 6S charge flex. Try that. If it's good. Pardon me, then we know that we've just got to replace the flex. If it's still misbehaving like that, then we may have a tri-star issue. May have. Easier just to diagnose and check these things through a bit of differential part swapping. Yeah, that's definitely doing a weird cycle there. Uh, less dramas with my repairs, only because of the fact that I've got no dramas to really share. Give me another couple of years, I'm sure I'll be able to have some protracted, drama-filled introduction every time. Rathkey. Okay, thanks. 
tell you what, it's one way to learn people's names. Get it wrong. <laughs> I appreciate it though. It always... I legitimately do actually. It's a good way to learn how to pronounce other people's names when they're not even from your perhaps region or something. Alright, now we've got no charge at all. Fantastic. We got a Shonky Brothers charge for it. We must have. Marvelous. Nothing quite like getting a new flex. That's actually a refurbished flex because you can see all the old marks on it, and then find out that it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, like, gee, I can't believe this is new. Look at that. It's even got a free screw with it. Yeah. And I pay money for this. That's hilarious that I've got a free screw with this one and a bit of hair. Yep. Okay. We're still going to have to find ourselves a dock there. Let's see. 6S. This one's gone out of focus slightly again. Probably is more likely my eyes. Sorry, bear with me while I recalibrate the system. Here we go. Hey Wayne. Hey Greg M. I see Unos Dos is in here. Here we have. Okay, that's a genuine assembly. Not. Some seriously liquid damaged bones. Very seriously. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm just looking for an original dock because I seem to have run out of spares in my box of parts that are supposed to be new but they really aren't. Yep, nothing left in there. So we're just gonna <coughs> steal it out of here. Bum, 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 bum. I keep going for the T5 even though that's completely not correct for this device. Give me the tweezers. Hey Ignacio, welcome back. Not the kind of thing you say. <laughs> With the success, there is a nice little tricky hidden screw that sits under this black bit of tape. And if you forget that, it can be quite fun trying to get the dock flex out. You can try. You can try real hard. And you probably will succeed. But you'll probably break it too. Okay, where's that other? I'm just going to put some heat on the back here and try and loosen up that glue. Uh, 
Uh, Ignacio, why, you don't get anxiety because you think you'll work your way out of it or just because, oh well, what can you do? You like to try and tear, don't you? Yeah. Surgical blade and microscope required. this seen someone on another YouTube channel showing a Parco scientific microscope which is about 150 or so less than the AM scope I'd be kind of dubious of the quality of such a thing at that price I mean as it is I always find the AM scope almost too cheap at least from what I know in terms of historical costings of microscopes if you want half reasonable optics I mean, at some point, something's going to have to give for that price to be viable. Okay, original dock in. Okay, well, it's still doing the weird 300 dip down thing okay now it seems to be behaving uh, maybe that 300 dip was just as it transitioned between uh, different modes or states I'm doing 1.6 amp so I'd say the dock is damaged on this Yeah, there's no way I could be pulling this many amps here, yeah, 1.7 amps, 1.6, without it um, being a proper working one. Alright, now I've got to work out what the damn passcode was. Okay. Off screen, of course. Home button works. Okay, everything else seems fine. Fine enough for now. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to do a dock replacement. I'm going to leave their screen as is. I will fix up the um, screw screw-ups. And that way then the person... Yeah, they get to go home with a phone that's seems to be working in spite of their river damage because I have a feeling they're not going to be interested in if this had been a full liquid damage as in board corrosion all that sort of stuff I have a feeling they would have walked away from it um, this has got to go back to the supplier thrown in their face I don't know who they're getting to supply these sort of things but I've noticed recently that the the quality is taking a serious dive now this isn't the greatest, but it's better than the malfunctioning one, that's for sure. So I'd say we reassemble the screen, get that out of the way, clear the screws out, and we actually put the screen in pr correctly.
Any microscope without a brand name, Olympus, etc. All made in the same factory. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. I do, like I said, I do wonder. I know it's been said they don't do any parts binning, but I do wonder why there's a significant price difference still. I mean, 150 less, that feels like it's even cheaper than the AliExpress ones that I was looking at. Why is it so warm in here? It's got down to 23. It's got some proper cool air. Now, I mean, there's no doubt that Aimscope is just rebranded generic. I just didn't think they were quite that far to the bottom of the barrel, though. I mean, I could be wrong. Still, at the end of the day, I've got my own. I paid my investment into the industry. Actually, I didn't really. It was the kind donations of the people that watch my YouTube channel that mostly did that. That was quite a while ago now. I can't believe people actually watched me before I even had a microscope. That must have been boring as sin. Prepare the command line over the web interface. Oh yeah, so do I. Are you talking about Git? Oh, right, yeah. Hey, Bailey. How's it going down there? Okay, I need that screw. Let's see if I can... find something that's going to fit from a six containment... Eeny meeny miny mo, pick the screw and get it wrong. Pick the wrong screw and drive it through and leave a little mark, circle mark on the other side of the paint. That's what it is. It was always fun on the iPhone 4 and 4S and the 5s. Where you get the long screw up here and you drive it through and then you get a nice little circle scratched out of the paint. Okay, we're gonna get this out now. It's basically just a duplicate of what we did before. I have tried refurbishing these dock connectors in the past just to see if I can you know just to see if it's possible but unfortunately it seems that once they become damaged from the corrosion you can't quite get in deep enough into them you can't clean out where the real damage has been done and given that they're so cheap it's better off replacing them And then after this, we can get back to the MacBook. Best camera around is definitely the cofocal microscope. It costs a bit more. Mm. Remember the video with the shield, with the iPhone 5S, how patient you were taking apart the shield? I'm trying to think which one that was. Mm. 
Uh, forgotten now. I do have a vague recollection of it, but I have forgotten the overall. Oh, why did I even do that? Oh, that's right. This one comes off the. Sometimes your hands get ahead of you and replace or start extracting items that you don't realise you have to extract. You know, like, why am I doing this? Yes, indeed. Why am I doing this? Careful not to pinch those cables. Come on. Just gotta get over that little lip there. Come on. Gotcha. Alrighty, yep, all is revealed. You can see all the liquid ingress. Uh, I really actually do want to completely take the board out. But I know this person's going to be like, mm, I don't want to. Okay, I shouldn't be like that. But it does just worry me, that's all. But I said to him, I said, look, it's either going to be liquid damage to the point where it's going to be a data recovery job only, or you, know, you might be able to have it partially work, in which case, you know, get the data off, but then expect it to drop dead any day. So as long as he takes it home and backs this up, then it'll basically be objective achieved anyway. Because it's going to be the same sort of cost involved, and the person is at least at this point going to have a phone they feel is going to work, though I would have my reservations about that. Okay, and we are out of there. Put some red X's on this stuff, just some general red paint everywhere to indicate that no this is not a happy little device yeah in some ways I'm kind of disappointed it didn't have a tri-star failure some ways can do it. Okay, good. Everything lined up. Now put everything back in. This is a rather tedious process, I know. Uh. 
Oh, what the heck? It's made more tedious when you seem to be a little bit incompetent and <laughs> putting things back together. I haven't seen many, uh, Sonia, I haven't seen really any of Northbridge. I think I saw one, I made a comment on it, I'm not sure what it was. Oh, I think it was dealing with customers or something like that. So I don't really know how, what he's like on a general repair. Rob Brown is the opposite of scripted. Yeah, definitely no script here, other than the fact of I'm going to do a repair today. Maybe. That maybe happens a little too often, though. Great. Now I've got to try and align these coaxial cables. Yeah, that's how it goes, Rob turn on the camera and see what flies. Ah, come on. The problem I'm running into here is the combination of the microphone and the Output padding here is blocking the. Uh, try that. You're going to go there. Uh, routing this piece of coax is such a pain. Especially because you don't want to harm it in any way. There's very limited tolerances. And it's also very easy to make to damage it. Come on, get in. Thank you. She knows. No, oh, Cormac, you had Soren commenting on your video. I don't think he's ever commented on any of mine. He's made mention of me through the software situation, but uh, I don't think I've ever seen him make a comment on mine. I can't imagine there's a lot of crossover, though, in what I do and what he does in terms of what he would want to comment on. Ah, that nose. I think I've left a comment or two on his, though. Or maybe that was just in his Discord. Good job, Paul. Try to puncture that battery. Bravo. Plugged in. Put in the remainder of the screws. Are you looking for translations? No, at this point, mostly because I don't actually have a translation engine built in. 
Um, I know, I know, I know. I should have one of those international translation engines. Because, I mean, there's plenty that are open source, etc. But I, I really think at one point, I need to get the software to a stable point, truly stable point. And at this point, it's not there. For me, the definition of stable is when Lewis gets bored of it and finds nothing to yell about it for at least, well, let's say, a month. Yeah, the reason why I refer to Lewis a lot in terms of with regards to Flexboard View is because he is a classic type user that I can sort of um, reflect off in the sense of he's got a short amount of time, he doesn't want to read a manual, support is always too slow, uh, so if it misbehaves there and then, then we're going to hear about it there and then. So my game, my aim is to make it so that he doesn't actually have any of those events, or at least no more than one a month, maybe one a week. It's a fairly tough standard, but I think it's one that I want to try and achieve. Crunchy noises when I shut that, that's always fun. Power up. Oh, Battery is looking like it's a bit weak there. Cause I had 3% when I shut it down and now it's... So we could still have a TriStar issue but... I'm not... Like I said, I don't think the customer is interested in investing in that sort of repair. If they are, they can always bring it back later and I'll just do it. Because it's not a big drama to do the TriStar on the success. It's fairly trivial to take the board out and swap it, you know, change the chip. Um, as for these, yeah, what am I going to do with you guys? Look, a success body tray. <laughs> success plus, success body. <laughs> I nearly went head over heels. Not that anyone cares. Would have made fine comic material. Okay, I found six done. So at this stage, I have a choice. I can either um, keep going with that 1502, 2015, but the problem I have with that is. I have a feeling it's probably going to be a display issue. And I feel like because I would be just replacing stuff in the blind, I'm more than likely I'm going to cause more trouble than what I fix. And so until I get a display, I suspect the prudent option will be just simply just put it aside, wait till I can diagnose it one way or another. Because the last thing I want to do is add more dramas to my work. Yeah, that's success. This one can go in the bin because that's a dud. But fortunately I do have another machine to work on. So we'll get to that and it's a 1398. Ooh, that could be a... no. I was going to say that could be a 2015 but I'm like no, do not go that route. It's bad enough using someone else's display of the same type, let alone an A13, 98, 15 inch retina display. That's just asking for trouble. Okay. Alright, so we'll go get that machine and get started on it.
Seems like they've done a battery replacement on this as well. I fix it one. And I've got an epic story here to read. Let's see what's going on. Looks like Lewis sent this person to me. Fun and games. Uh, let's see. Spilled water on it a few times. Also jelly. Well, at least they're honest. Started to play up a few years ago. Trackpad was jittery, not tracking. Managed to fix it somewhat. Hello, bug. Played games on it via boot camp. Got really hot. The volume up button deformed. Scary. And the power button. Wow, really scary. Battery started failing two years ago. Managed to continue using it. And... Let's see, gradually got worse. SMC and Pram reset, all the tricks, but nothing worked now. The screen not turning at all. Sometimes it decided to load up the upper logo, very aggressive. So I wonder if this is a U8900. Okay. This could be a U8900 as a core issue, and then probably a hell of a lot of other issues with it. Uh, it was some kind of creature. I don't think it's a... M no, it's not a moth. I think it's... Let's have a look. Yeah, you ain't no moth. You got scary eyes though, dude. Hey, wave, you're on YouTube. Say hello to the world. Hello. Yeah, that's a little beetle of some sort, of weevil or a beetle. Anyway, it's thankfully not a stink bug, no. It's a bunyip. <laughs> Thankfully not. Okay, I really got to get more of this stuff because I can feel it's starting to actually become slightly sticky. Meaning that it's not really going to be doing its job as protecting the people's uh, MacBook cases. Instead, it's going to start leaving marks on them. Okay, so this is job 4152 it seems. And we're expecting potentially a U8900 and then liquid damage and battery damage and keyboard damage. That should be good. Let's see how we go. Hey, Copaz. Let's see. This has been washed. So if there was stuff on here, it's been washed off. Batteries. Disconnect first. Are you guys just floating there? Neat. I wish more batteries were like that. Okay, this has been obviously replaced. Quick cursory glance. I don't think this is the U8900 model. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm supposed to know better. I'm supposed to be able to just look at these things and go, oh yeah, that's such and such. But I don't. Not always. Well, there might be. Supposed to be getting ready to drive to Helinski. Uh, just driving, yeah. Yuck. Pass. Come on. 
things sort of tilted down a bit now. That'll do. There we go. Connect her up. Let's take a little. I do like this one for the fact that it's got the flip back fan rubbers as opposed to having to just pull them out of the assembly. Just small things like that can make a technician's life so much nicer. It's very considerate of Apple. Display connector seems fine, thankfully. Are you safe in the fire? Um, we're perfectly safe in the fire here. In fact, we can't even smell it here. There's, it's not coming up to this region. It is a substantial distance from us, around about 1,600 kilometers away at best. This model, however, does have the issue with these Wi-Fi connectors. You look at them wrong and sometimes they decide that they're going to just pull out of their... Uh, <coughs> the crimp and then you get very upset when that happens is there any place on the net to get software for older versions of iOS Mac oh. no. No, that one I don't know I don't know a lot really comes the part I hate, taking these Wi-Fi cables off. Really, you don't know the dread until you break one. And then to make it more interesting, you've got to get the... Oop, we lost power. Camera will be back in a second. Come on, camera. There we go. You gotta get this camera connector out without annoying the Wi Fi. They're yeah, like that, see? That's really dumb. So I guess you just do the slow shuffle out. And to make it even harder for this coming out is that it's bonded to the whole cable assembly on the fan. So it's a real step by step progress thing. There we go. you still got a screw in you. How about now? You seem more willing this time. There we go. Surprisingly, in spite of the confessions of liquid damage, there really isn't anything showing on the underside there. That happens quite often. You get the people who admit that there's been liquid damage and then you go in there and there's like pretty much nothing. Alright, let's see if we're, I think we are a U900 on this one. I think, think, think. Yep, there we go. 
That's our U8900. Alright, now let's look around before we do that and see if there's anything else. That could be wildly amiss. Jeez, some s stamps all over that. Liquid mark has been removed. Well, you could have fooled me, that's for sure. Someone said to me, this has been liquid damage. Yeah, hadn't said to me it was liquid damage, I was sure wouldn't be looking for it. Still, we keep looking. Maybe that's the best way to fix your MacBook if you have got liquid damage. Oh, okay, look, we've got a little bit there. Is tell the tech it's got liquid damage. And then magically it um, erases all that liquid damage. Okay, so we've got the one wee smidge of liquid damage over here. And that's about it. And so otherwise, I'd say this is just pretty much a U8900 and a new battery pack. Uh, pretty much it. <sighs> now, of course, I do hate this because... Ah... Uh, Touching this up means putting flux all over the board, which means washing the board. I hate doing that. Oops. Well, I don't know if they were covering their tracks, but they certainly, you know, did clean up, so... I'm just going to preheat the board a bit. This is just 250. So nothing's going to go and desolder itself or anything, but it's going to take the chill out of the board. Yeah, we did look at the case, Arnold, and that was the thing. Um, if you rewind back, you'll see I say it's been wiped clean. Yeah, Mal, it's a 3332. Or at least I sure hope so. So I'm reflowing, I'm uh, touching up a chip that doesn't need chopping. Chopping up? Huh. Touching up. It's going to need a bit more heat soak again. It's just starting to get a little cold. The heat soak makes a big difference in getting this job done.
And that is that. Uh, I can see a little bit of you can see a little bit of dusting of the liquid damage there. At least it hasn't come up into this area. Often you get problems when it sort of starts touching on the edges, gets in under these V-rams. I think they're V-rams. phone just made a noise or someone else's phone in the workshop made a noise uh, I better message that person that has the liquid damage run Sorry, I'm just... I just realised what I should do is back it up for them anyway. Just my own personal copy. In case they forget to back it up or they don't have a way of backing it up. Or, yeah, something. Because you know that's how it's going to go. You know that... No matter how emphatically you tell someone that they need to back something up, the moment they walk out of your store with their device that's working, that useful information just evaporates. There's some liquid damage there. And there, and there. But that's all stuff that will just come out in the... Um, it has had flux rework by the looks of it. Is that flux? Yeah, that's hardened flux. So someone's been doing stuff around here. Put it through the ultrasonic and it'll clean all that up. Now I'm just trying to find where I put that little red mark. I can't believe I've actually lost that. need something a little more obvious visually oh, where did you go but certainly I would say in, on this there we go so triple three two confirmed I mean, the fact that it has U8900 pretty much confirms it anyway, but sometimes you like to double confirm. Oh, seriously now, where did I put those marks? Are you able to clean it up with that? I could cues, but this board, because it does have prior liquid damage, I think maybe it'll be more of a service to dunk the whole lot in. I mean, the marks that I picked up before and I put the red pen on, they weren't bad, so they will probably just be cleaned up naturally in the ultrasonic. 
right now I'm just a little bit like I'm just sort of sitting here going how the heck did I misplace those marks so where did they go seriously where did I put them It's almost like I've got a separate board and put them. I wonder if they're USB port. Do they make any mention of the USB ports? Time to check the uh, script. No mention of USB issues. Alright. Uh, we're talking about old computers. My first PC was a uh, 8088 with the typical turbo button on it, so you had 477 or 10, and I had a 20 megabyte ST255 or was it ST225? Anyway, I had one of those in there, the old MFM drives. wasn't rich enough to have an RLL one although I did cover the RLLs a few times but yeah and then a few years later I managed to upgrade to a IDE 100 megabyte drive full height but that thing died on me about six months into using it I guess it was my own fault because I bought it at an auction. Right. So I should have expected it would die sooner or later. Oh, there they are. There's the marks. Damn it. The main reason I was concerned about here is because it looks like they had scratched away at it a little bit. So I wanted to see if the resistor and the cap still had integrity. Looks like they're good. Yeah, the integrity by you reflow the legs and if they fall apart then you know that things went right. And if they don't fall apart you know things are good. Yep, that'll be fine. Shouldn't be any problems at all with this. Alright. Let's stand. Oop, looks like someone's... Alrighty, person's fine with them picking up in half an hour. Yep. Okay. Alright, so this is actually... I'd be very surprised if this doesn't just boot up and work. And unfortunately I'm kind of cut for time because I have to do all my iPhone backups and general stuff and all that is done down in the other room. So I'm going to have to uh, basically walk away from this and then head down there and get that sorted out before they turn up. I also have another customer coming to pick up another phone, that um, 6S Plus. Which means we have come to the end of another day. And yet another cliffhanger, sort of. We know that's all that was really wrong with this, so that really wasn't a um, special fault. Wireless body cam, uh, that would probably be the worst thing in the world for you, you'd be traumatised to no end. Oh yeah, the first sound blaster cars, I remember they came in the big um, box kit and they came with the sound blaster and you had a cheaper copy of Microsoft Office in there, and the speakers and the CD-ROM drive. What was it about two speed or a four speed version uh, i had the first cd drive i had was one that you actually put the cds in a caddy 
and then load the caddy into the unit. I actually didn't mind them, I kind of preferred them in many ways. Mm, pardon me. Alright. Voodoo 2 was the first expensive car. The Voodoo's were quite expensive at the time. And then there was the, um, prior to that you had the, um, the diamond cards. Uh, before we started getting the, what did we have, the T-Sing 4000s. Uh, and then what was the, there was another brand and it was like, it had the 8800, the 8900 and they were kind of like a cheap version of the T-Sing. Yeah. Alright. Okay, well, i got a scoot. So, thank you all, everyone, for jumping in for the after-lunch repairs. I know nothing really exciting happened here, but hopefully it uh, entertained you and made your day a little bit easier to get through. Certainly, it's uh, always fun to have you all around here and chit-chat while I do the work. It's because, you know, it's just me here doing the repairs. I don't have any co-workers, so it's nice to have other people to bounce ideas off and have a chit-chat. All right. I'm out of here. You'll take care. Watch out for those bun yips. Don't let the dingoes chase you. And I'll see you next time.